It's Classic Country 100.1 WGLC. Good morning. Joining us on the phone from south of Nashville, uh, country music uh, recording artist and a man of many, many talents, uh, Jeff Carson on the phone. Good morning. Hey, how are you, Charles? Good morning to you. Now, I, I said many talents because uh, uh, let's be real. Uh, you do lots of things <laughs> before oh. we get started. I cannot imagine, I, I suppose the last year with the pandemic made your scheduling and life a little bit easier, but you are a full-time working man, and I guess it's safe to say now part-time country artist. Well, yeah, I know. You know, back in probably 05, uh, or, you know, I was hired as a police officer in 08, so my my career music career was kind of foundering and and uh i just couldn't make a living at it anymore and i had a newborn son and as hard as it was man i had to walk away from music and uh and the only other thing that ever interested me my whole life was being a cop so at the tender age of 44 i was able to get on the department and uh, been with them for the past 13 years now but uh, yeah just in the last year I've been getting my feet back into the country music again i'm so excited about it I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that uh, of among your peers in law enforcement, you're the only person on the department with a number one single. <laughs> well, yes, I believe you are correct. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> you know, it was one of those things where um, when I first got hired, I don't know, I just I just kind of wanted to separate myself from the whole music thing. And I remember I got hired at the time with about eight of their officers, and we were going through a uh, you know, asking everybody where they were from, what kind of line of work they come from. And it got to me, and I just, you know, simply said I, I I was in the music business. And they kept pressing and pressing. And finally I told them, you know, the success I'd had and, and was blessed with. And there was a guy who was hired with us from New York. He had a real thick New York accent. And as soon as I said, yeah, I had a, I had a song called The Car and the Not On Your Love that, that went number one. And he goes, dude, I got your accent. I got your albums at home. <laughs> and everyone laughed. They thought he was being sarcastic. <laughs> well, it's that, it, that always... it's incredible uh, that you've, uh, you know, continued with something that you wanted to do. It's it's one of those things that happens sometimes uh, in a lot of uh, things to do with the entertainment industry, where you'll have mm -hmm. musicians that want to become actors, and you'll have actors that want to become musicians. And you'll have, uh -huh. you'll have radio disc jockeys who want to be able to afford to buy a pizza. It all is sort of like a big <laughs> in-circle thing. And for you, you Keep started... Keep Charles. Keep <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of these days, I'm going to go ahead and get two toppings. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> uh, it's one of those things with your case. You went out there. You did the music thing. And, and there's nothing that you shouldn't hang your hat on for having a number one single a bunch of albums out there, a music video, all that stuff. And then yeah. you then go and do something else that you love. It's not often somebody gets to go do what they want to do twice. I know. I've been very blessed, man, to have, because there's, there's nothing else. I remember when the music was drying up and, you know, I, I like I said, I had the newborn son. I, I just got to make a living for my family. I got to have a steady paycheck. My well, My wife and I were talking about what, you know, this and that, maybe work at this place, that, and just, I just nothing, it, nothing was sounding good to me, you know, I, I would do what I had to do, but uh, I'd always had a affinity for law enforcement, and, and uh, so it, that, that was a natural thing to do, and so I was, uh, yeah, like you say, I was very, very blessed to do two things I always wanted to do in my life, but I sure miss the music. And we were going to talk about the music, too, because you've had a, a bunch of singles that came out, and we're going to play some of those this morning, uh, including uh, The Car, of course, which a uh, small place in my heart because I have passed a Mustang down to my daughter. So it sort, oh, of, really? it sort of fits a little bit in that same sort of vein there. Uh, it's not as cool to her because it's old now as it is to me. It's unfortunately not old enough to be cool, cool, but... It's sort of that same thing, and I understand the sentimentality of that. And and I got to ask, was there a special car that you had as a teen? I think your first car is always going to be the most memorable one. My my first car was actually a, a truck. Um, my senior year of high school, um, I drove a school bus. Uh, I was just old enough, and they were clamoring for drivers. So 
I, I would drive by this um, uh, on my route every day. I looked over and I saw in the shed uh, an old pickup truck. It was a 55 Chevrolet pickup truck. I'd see that thing sitting there every day, you know, and it just wasn't being driven. Ended up buying it for $200, and uh, my dad and I, with the help of my ag ride teacher uh, there at the little town I was with, uh, helped me rebuild the little straight six cylinder engine and uh, got it running. I remember the first time we pulled it through our pasture, you know, and popped the clutch and it <laughs> ran. It, it, it smoked like, a, you know, it was killing mosquitoes. But yeah. I, was, I couldn't have been happier. Yeah, it's always something special about that that first car and and a lot of other milestones you've had in your life in regards to firsts when was the first time as you were starting out as a musician did you realize that maybe you were going to get some songs in the charts that this was going to be a lot more than playing in bars and picking up sessions here and there well it had to be the first album. You know, my, my, the very first single that I signed with Curb, the very first single that was put out was a song called Yeah, Buddy. And it made it up to like in the 60s on the chart. But I was still excited. I was like, 60? I, I mean, I'm on the charts, you know, no matter <laughs> in top 100 or whatever. I was excited that I was on the charts. And uh, and the second single out of the box was Not On Your Love. And it, golly, it went number one on billboard and r and r and gavin and all, and all that do you it's, remember it's kind of like a dream it's kind of one of those things looking back i don't think i really appreciated what a feat that was and how seldom that happens and uh yeah if if i had a time machine i would uh more relish those moments you know what i mean do you remember the first time you heard your song on the radio I do. Uh, I, well, it, it was kind of cheating because um, I would travel around with uh, regional representatives there with Curb, MCG Curb, and we would go to different radio stations and introduce and say hi, and here's how I got a new single out. So I heard it really on the radio then, or, or they would know I was coming to the station, and uh, on the way in the car to the station, you'd hear the, you'd hear the song. Um, so it was, that, that really wasn't a, a full-out unexpected and I knew it was coming uh, what sticks in my mind mostly we were running um we were quite on, were on the road hitting it pretty heavy and i was in the back of the bus one day and i had the radio on don't know what station it seemed like we were maybe in oklahoma and i heard not on your love and uh you know always grateful but for some reason i hit another i hit to another scan the next uh, station see it was on and it was on the second station that was the, that was the thing i remember <laughs> most of all that i saw him playing on two different stations at the same time oh that's that's incredible on the phone with us uh country music uh, artist jeff carson and most importantly uh now a law enforcement officer for the city of franklin tennessee uh, still putting in 40 hours a week and then some? I, I am. It feels like 60. <laughs> so here's a question. Uh, do you have the guitar in the squad car with you? <laughs> no, no. There, I mean, you wouldn't believe the amount of stuff we have to carry. Oh, my gosh. The whole – and we have uh, Ford Explorers. And I mean the the whole back is just taken up with you name it, man. <laughs> Extra carriers and plate covers and and ammunition and, and belts and vests and uh, it, it's it's incredible. It's mind boggling how much things you have to carry with you nowadays as a police officer. So no, there's no room for the for the axe back there. It is pretty amazing that you're doing uh, again the hard work and the great work for the people of Franklin. And is it sort of known in the community that, you know, oh, you know, this is our police department. By the way, these are our firefighters. Oh, I forgot to tell you, one of our police officers, and then they and then they sort of go into you. No, not really. You know, I've always kind of kind of kept try to keep those things separate. Um, now, I will say with the release of my latest single, God Save the World, that um, uh, got with back with M was was mcg now it's mcc curb uh along with mc1 records and um they they were wanting to um kind of push the uh kind of bring it to the forefront of being a police officer since you know the song talks about just the 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 world we're living in and right now and thought that would be a, a plus now i went to the to the um lieutenant above me and and uh you know sent it up the chain of command because i i didn't think they would be that 
uh, excited about having um, someone, uh, and I'm not speaking for the police department. I'm speaking as a country artist. So uh, it, I didn't know how they would receive that, and they they were very receptive. Though. I was surprised. And then you've done shows for the Fraternal Order Police and other organizations because now that's like <laughs> that's like an angle there for you, and it's working out good. Well, actually, yeah, actually, I did those. Uh, um, uh, really, wasn't promoting the police. I, I think I was hired to do a lot of those FOP shows. Uh, without them even knowing I was a police officer. I remember mentioning it when I do a show, like, uh, hey, I'm, I'm one of you. And they were like, what? So it was uh, <laughs> a lot of unknown. It's fantastic. Uh, on the phone, talking to uh, country music artist uh, Jeff Carson. And yeah, you, the song God Save the World, uh, you did it a, a number of years ago. It's been 20 something years. And yeah. you've gone, you, you've you sort of cut it again, and you're putting it out there. Is this sort of making you, you know, crack that door open a little bit and think about, you know, trying to push this a little more and, and see what happens? Yes. I mean, tell you, Charles, I hadn't had – I. it's been probably a month now that um, the song broke top 40 on the Music Road chart. And uh, I was working at the time during the day and got the news – and I instantly, just for my own sake, you know how on Facebook, how stuff uh, pops up a year later, memories and stuff. Mm-hmm. I just really just um, had to put it out there how excited and happy and how emotional it was having a song get into the top 40, like you said, after 20-some years. And, uh, yeah, it, it caught a lot of views, and I think that was what ended up uh, getting seen by Curb, and then they joined forces and um, – and uh, put out the original one with Lisa Brokop, uh, her singing with me, and that 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 was actually my favorite version of the song. Anyway, so now now it's out getting plays, and uh, it's, it's so exciting. Yeah, I'm gonna ride this as long as I can, man. So, any chance you're going to pick up the guitar and maybe start writing some new music and 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 dabble a little bit and see? Because nowadays, with this new era of recording artists, because let's be real, there's a lot of people making their own music in their own homes now with equipment you can buy off the shelf that sounds as good as any album did 20 years ago. It is true, man. I, even even right before I was giving this up 13 years ago, everybody and their brother had a home studio. You know, everybody. Even now, even all these years, I've been doing uh, 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 demos still like I used to do, but instead of having to go into a studio now, someone will just email me a track, and I'll import it in my Pro Tools, and I'll sing my vocals, and I'll send them back to them. It's all through email. You don't even have to leave the house. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. There's I have dabbled into songwriting again here and written a couple of songs in the last few months that uh, uh, that turned out good, so... It feels good to get back in it. Jeff Carson on the phone with us and, of course, taking time out from his law enforcement career to talk with us today. Uh, You go out, you help people in the community. And, you know, not only that, but I mean, being a police officer, it's sort of a 24 hour a day job, seven day a week, because you never know when something is going to happen, an emergency is going to happen, and you're going to have to be there to help the community. Has, has there been a yeah. time in your law enforcement career where you've realized when it was all done, you know, at the end of the day, you wipe the sweat off your brow and you realize, I helped somebody or a group of people today? Yeah, it's it's happened It's happened a few times that uh, – that, uh, something I had a hand in, made a difference, and uh, yeah, it means a lot. It sure does. Jeff Carson on the phone with us this morning. If somebody wants to find out more about your music, hear that uh, the new uh, recover, the covered version, uh, so to speak, I guess, of mm-hmm. of that of that song or any of the other great songs you've had, uh, is there a place in the internet where people can direct themselves to? Yeah, I've got uh, I've got Facebook, which is official Jeff Carson. I've got Instagram, which is official Jeff Carson. And, uh, of course, I've got a, a YouTube channel and also a, a website that uh, keeps up with, with a few dates I have coming in already. Uh, and uh, that, that is jeff-carson.com. So any one of those. And uh, uh, I appreciate you all checking me out. Jeff Carson on the phone. We'll play a couple more of your songs here as we wrap things up. Thank you for joining us today. 
Thank you, Charles. I appreciate you, buddy. All right.